Hello, okay, I'm late, sorry about that. Okay, this review is gonna be a little bit different. Since I'm late, um, probably I will be saying a lot of spoilers. So if an issue pops up and you haven't read it, tune out, turn it off, read the issue, whatever, then come on back and check me out. Oh yeah. Okay, so first up is New Avengers number 54. Um, I usually, I really enjoy Bendis' dialogue. I think I can hear the voices of every character when they speak and when I read them. It sounds like them, it's natural, it's funny, it's witty, and um, it's hard packing as well. So, not, not only do you have that going for it, but in this particular issue, the New Avengers actually face a major villain, Dormammu, the Hood. Dormammu slash the Hood. And they actually do a grand ba battle royale. And this is probably the slowest Avenger books uh, out of all of them. There's not a lot of action. Well, there, there is and there isn't. But it's mostly uh, dialogue and character driven. But in this particular issue, we had a good action scene in here. And we had a major, major bad guy. Not only that, we also see the new Doctor Strange, which is Brother Voodoo. And he'll be called Doctor Voodoo. And we can see Strange's new role in the Marvel Universe will be, uh, I guess he'll be the new Ancient One. It's going to be training the new Dr. Voodoo. And the hood lost his cape. Holy moly! It all got... <laughs> Dormammu was vanquished to hell. And just when you think the hood is off the table, Loki comes out of nowhere and says, Do you want your powers back? This was a very enjoyable read. A lot of fun. A lot of action. Pick it up. What do we got next? Ooh, Runaways. This was really, really, really good. Number 11. Part 1, a perfect jumping on point for anybody who has been following it lately. The art is fantastic. I'm a sucker for this kind of like mangy, mangish cartoon kind of like art like, art like, like, like. Um, it also reminds me of the earlier works of the Runaways. The same artist? I don't know. I'd have to look that up. And Catherine Ramon really does a well, good written story. All Hell Breaks Loose, and it looks like they're going to do a re major revamping of the team. I think a new creative team will be on board after the story arc. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm enjoying the first part as well. I'm in suspense. So anybody who hasn't been reading Runaways, this is a perfect place to jump on. The Great Fables crossover, part nine of nine, the exciting conclusion. Um, as far as the crossover went, it was a very high action, high action sequence story where all crazy shit was happening. However, the ending was kind of anticlimactic. Uh, it had a nice resolution ending where everybody's happy and saves the day. But it kind of left me going, that's it? That's how I'm going to solve it? All right. Also, on the other point is, you know, as f because it's a crossover, we didn't really see that much. I was really looking forward to Jack interacting with the rest of the fables. Him being an asshole, the fables having to do. Like, he reminded me of the Guy Gardner, if you will, of uh, the fables universe. So, I mean, I was kind of bummed out that there wasn't that... You know what would have been fun? Like, if Jack and Bigby Wolf had to go, like, on some sort of, like, adventure, just the two of them, and, you know, they had to fight each other and complete their mission. I think, you know, it had a lot more potential, and it didn't exactly do that. I mean, I'm slightly disappointed, but, I mean, it was still very entertaining. I'm happy to see all the fables go back to their original books and follow their different stories. The Hood number two, this picks up and uh, this becomes a lot more interesting as we see the relationship between the Hood um, and Dormammu. Dormammu, Dormammu. And also we see um, how he feels about shooting that cop when he was way back in his first appearance. And if you haven't picked that, that is an amazing series. It's called The Hood. It's by Max Line. Yeah, go go rummage through it and, and buy it. Phenomenal stuff. Um, Brian K. Bond wrote it. Also, you know... I, just to see a little bit more insight into the hood and how he feels. And this is what how the issue should have started. The, the first one wasn't that... I mean, it was slightly interesting. We just see him being a bad guy and doing bad shit. But this one, you know, he has more to deal with his baby at home and his wife. His relationship with the mask. Uh, or what's her name? Iron... Whatever. Iron Mask. But it becomes a lot more interesting. And I'm going to be definitely on board for the third. So the issue number two went really way up there. Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this I recommend after they do the War of Kings crossover because it's just there's no if you're not if you're not reading this, there's no point in jumping on because you won't know what the fuck's going on. Um, Captain Britain at MI13 is is um it's being canceled. This would be a perfect substitute for it. It's a band of small small uh, Marvel Universe heroes like D-list characters, 
and they're thrust into these epic tales where they're fighting major bad guys, um, super villains, and they have a big impact on the Marvel space uh, universe. And they can even do a little bit more. They they even have a little bit more leeway because there's not such a big fan base with the space universe uh, as opposed to the planet Earth Marvel six one six. You know where they have to. They can't take. They can't do more outrageous things. But this, not only that, but the, the team dynamic is fantastic. It's a whole bunch of uh, huge egos and confused ids, com just conflicting each other, and they're trying to get get along, and they're just trying to do the job, and it's very very confusing. So there's that aspect that's highly entertaining, and um, this is a perfect substitute if you're going to miss Captain uh, Britain and the MI13. Pick up this issue. It's pretty much. Tick for tack, except they're in space. Wow. This is definitely the pick of the week. Detective Comics number 854. I was blown away. Um, the character is a, 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 a gay woman. And, you know, that. the only reason why I'm saying that is because they've written her so incredibly intelligently. Um, her sexuality is, doesn't really come into play. I mean, she goes through the same problems that everybody else goes through. Uh, there's a little bit of a Peter Parker, Spider-Man element where her relationship is is doomed because of her her uh, vigil her, her choices that she goes fights crime and she can't commit to anybody. Um, not only that, she's she it's sh it, it it starts off by her just being like this, like oh, tell me all your like she's tracking down this criminal and tell me all your information, scaring the shit out of him. And then also using a little bit of femininity, and because he's too scared to talk, like she'll be like, "I'll protect you," you know. And it was just such a perfect blend. Like the issue, the, the way it started off, cap it captured me. Then to read about her life and incredibly intelligently done. This is definitely the pick of the week. Pick up Detective Comics. Uh, plus, you get this great uh, second backup story with the question that was great as well. Pick of the week. Astonishing X-Men. And you know why also it's like, it's not going to be like two hot chicks making out. So, I mean, that's why you're picking it up. Don't bother. But I'm telling you, amazing. Uh, Astonishing X-Men, number 30. I don't like his artwork. There, I said it. I think it looks weird. It doesn't look like anybody the X-Men I know. This story doesn't sound like the X-Men. Um, I'm reading it in my mind. It just doesn't come across like Cyclops is actually saying these things and Storm is saying these things and I don't know I don't believe this is actually happening um, I think the story is too long it's too drawn out for such a a, a wrapped up conclusion they really didn't need to do all this anyway this once again blew me out of the water I've been praising this book all the time you know how I feel about it more soap opera dra drama the shit hits the fan Norman's the father Harry, Norman fucked his son's ex-girlfriend. What an asshole. Spider-Man getting tortured. The ending was a little bit cheesy. I'll give you that much. But, uh, uh. Um, so, um. <laughs> I, I didn't hate it. I didn't like it. I mean, I did kind of, I mean, I don't know. I'm confused. I'm going to have to give it a little bit more time to see if uh, I like what's going on in here. I mean, um. It's not Wolverine, it's his son, and he's taking over the book. Um, maybe, I think you know what it is. I think I'm just a little bit sick of Dark Reign. I'm, I'm sick of seeing villains' point of view. We, we're getting that thrown at us left, right, and center. And I think you can only do it so much before you just have like an overdose of it. And, um, and Wolverine's always been the anti-hero. So to have a villain take over his book really doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, you don't need to do that because Wolverine's already... A conflicted character as it is. Anyway, last book, X Factor. Nails it! I mean, Peter David writing. Uh, at first, I was only more interested in what happened, what's going on in the future. There's two storylines: one that's going on in the future, and one that's in the present. The president, the present story. <laughs> there was this little fucking battle where Shatterstar and Richter just start making out. I was like, "What? That's crazy!" And I just knocked me off my socks. I was like, "I was not expecting that." And uh, that's what I like about Peter David, man. He'll just put the shit in there, and you have to deal with it, and it's awesome. All right. Excelsior.